Took nearly three months, but Governor Greg Abbott has named a replacement for former Secretary of State David Whitley. So who is Ruth Hughes? KXAN Morning Anchor Sally Hernandez joins us with the Texas Tribune's Alana Rocha to find out. All right, Alana, let's talk about the new Texas Secretary of State, Ruth Ruggiero Hughes. Yes. How unique is it for the governor to choose her a naturalized citizen? Well, uh, it's interesting. There's a lot to unpack here. Of course, uh, being a naturalized citizen, the outgoing or the now, you know, previous uh, Secretary of State went out at the head of a botched voter roll yep. review where lawsuits said that they were uh, trying to disenfranchise naturalized citizens in the state. So that makes Hughes as a pick very interesting. Um, but yeah, also the fact that the governor took 80 plus days to name David Whitley's replacement. Whitley, if you remember, uh, resigned on the final day of the session after failing to you know, garner uh, enough votes in the Senate for confirmation. Right. Um, and so, yeah, then he's named Hughes. I mean, a, a woman, a minority, a naturalized citizen. So, I mean, I think she checks a lot of boxes sure. and has a good reputation, longtime Abbott aide. But she doesn't need to be confirmed? She's not going down that route? No, we're in the interim. Okay. And so, um, come 2021, when lawmakers are back at the Capitol, mm -hmm. she would be subject to Senate confirmation. But looking at how long people stay in this position, just here in Texas, she might not still be in the role come the uh, 2021 session. Wow, we look back at history, right? Right, just mm -hmm. looking at the you know the length of stay mm -hmm. uh, and different factors always play into that. But uh, you know, I'm sure she'll get through the 2020 elections. Who knows? A lot can happen between now and then. <laughs> but uh, yeah, she would be subject to Senate confirmation upon lawmakers' return. Let's talk about Dallas. I was surprised to learn that just in the month of May, they had 40 homicides. Yeah. I'm talking about a total of 220 this year. This is in Dallas. What did the governor do in response to that? Yeah, they uh, sent troopers, basically, uh, in May, given that it was the highest monthly total since the 1990s. Mm -hmm. And actually, the total for the year is around 100, well, as of our story a couple weeks ago, it was like 135. Wow. But they're still, they're trending higher, while cities like San Antonio and Houston are on the decline. Mm -hmm. There's several factors that our reporting okay. uh, found. Uh, one was just a limited... Uh, resources as far as homicide investigators. Uh, nobody can agree exactly on what's causing it. Uh, but then there are have been uh, several complaints. While there's been a slight dry, drop in violent crime mm -hmm. since the governor deployed these troops, um, or troopers, I should say, uh, a lot of people are complaining about over-policing, that they're being stopped to be asked their immigration status. Oh, wow. Or stopped because they have soon-to-be expired tags. Not yet expired, but soon-to-be. Right. So different things like that. So, yeah, I mean... And it's a temporary fix, right? So we'll see what happens, but our uh, reporter, Troy Clawson, really lays it all out uh, at texastribune.org. Is this normal? Have we seen this in other Texas cities before where you deploy troopers to help with the crime rate? Uh, you know, I think, I, I don't know. I can't yeah. say that. I mean, under Abbott, I don't think we've seen it. No. But um, I think it's just a way to show you're responding and, and seeing these alarming numbers, uh, the state wanted to step in in this, in this fashion. Yeah, you said it. I mean, the detectives, I think, in that one city is, what, 22? Right. And then here in Austin, our rate is much lower. We have 12. So right. when you look at the numbers, Houston has... Or Houston, yeah, 85. 85 of them. Yeah. So, and again, you know, per 100,000 people, the, the rate is much lower. Right. So, yeah, it's a lot of different factors and a lot of different conflicting opinions on exactly what the cause is, what the solution should be. So, uh, it's a lot to unpack. Okay, Alana, thank you for doing that for us. Thank you.